So what impact have you seen bioacoustic technology have on your research or just research in general? Yeah, so like technology side, like the you know computing side, you know programs get better, computers get faster. You start to learn like servers are more efficient. We have like it's terabytes of data that we go through, and so that doesn't stay wow. stored on your laptop, right? You a lot of times we have to like hook into a server. Internet gets faster. Anything technology-wise in the coding programming world, as that gets better and more accessible. Um, it's easier to analyze data. It's easier for students to like make the jump into analyzing data. Like I had to learn MATLAB just on the fly in grad school. I had done no programming in undergrad. Yeah. And now it's like, it seems like people do a good amount of programming in high school or undergrad. So like that oh. barrier to entry is lower. Um, and then like hardware side, the beginning of grad school is about when people started trying to do like off the shelf stuff. So I was in that, I was in grad school in that transition to if you're a bioacoustician or any sort of acoustics person, you have to have an engineer in your lab, like hire one or more engineers, build all your own stuff. And then that's what you deploy in the ocean to collect your data on. And now there's a couple of companies that you just like buy it off the shelf. Like they've manufactured it. They have the whole production line of how to do it. It's not like they have you know, 50 employees. These guys are still doing it like solo or maybe with a couple of, you know, yeah. employees, but it's also like reduces that barrier to entry. You don't have to be an electrical engineer or hire somebody to like solder out your circuit boards and decide, you know, design your whole piece of equipment. So. You can do it like me, I'm by myself. I do it so good, I don't need nobody else. Like how or when did you know that this bioacoustics and music and biology was something you wanted to do for your career? Hmm. Like this specific kind of project when I was doing it in grad in undergrad for my thesis thing. But the whole like idea of the career was probably about when I was five. Like my oh. uncle graduated from vet school and I remember like very distinctly having this book from the library about rabbits and he had to read it to me because I understood that vet and animal went together and I was like no. My uncle has to read this to me because he works with animals. So clearly he has to read me the rabbit book. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember at his vet school graduation asking him like actually what a veterinarian is. And he's like, oh, I take care of large animals. He meant cattle. <laughs> he meant cows and pigs and farm animals because like, you know, vet school divides up large and small animal. Yeah. But so if, as a five-year-old, I was like elephants and, <laughs> and hippos. And I was like, I'm going to do that. So I said for a long time as a kid, I was going to be a large animal vet. But in my mind, it was, I'm going to go find large animals like giraffes and yeah. take care of them. It worked out in a way. It's still kind of the same thing I'm doing. Whales are very large <laughs> animals. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh. So what would be the coolest experience you've had in your career? Good question. I think the first time I experienced a uh, humpback, like the way that whales can use boats like getting an eye into their perception of what a boat is, what this thing floating in their environment is. We had in Mexico, I was working with the lab there. There was a mom and a calf with like three males pursuing her. And the, the mom had like a couple lines of fishing net around her head. And so she was towing this fishing net behind her. And she kind of came up and like used the boat. She like sat near the boat. Like as, she, as long as she stuck with us, two of the males went away. Only the, uh, the main escort stayed. And so it was like, oh, did she use the boat to like get rid of these other two whales? Was that her way of like getting them to leave her alone? And as she, so she stayed with us for quite a while. And while she and her calf were a little bit off to the side, the escort kind of just kept hanging underneath our boat. And he would come up on one side and like line his eyeball up with where we were and just look at us. <laughs> go under, come up on the other side. So we'd go over on the other side and he'd just line his eyeball up with like where we were and look at us. Keeping an eye. <laughs> yeah, or, I don't know, like sizing us up, trying to figure out what we were. Like there's, oh you know, God. there was something above his head that he was interested in checking out. For yeah. what reason? I think that's too much extrapolation. But yeah, just <laughs> is the coordination of 
have he had a clear idea of what he wanted to look at on the boat for where he was putting his eye, it seemed. Mm -hmm. No, that's fascinating. I totally, I wish we could maybe hopefully, not in my lifetime, I don't think it'll happen, but maybe we'll be able to understand a little bit about what goes through their minds because I would love to know what they're thinking and what they're looking at and just their perspective on that whole situation. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. That would be more than our lifetimes. Yeah. I don't think that's an easy, that's not an easy lift. Definitely I mean, not. We have a hard enough time getting inside the minds of each other, let alone the minds of a different species. Yeah. So you said that there were other males following her around. Um, whales aren't something that I know a lot about mm -hmm. behaviorally. So why would the female be trying to get a, why would they be pursuing her if she had an escort with her? Um, yeah, so an escort is just the male that's closest to her. So in a competition yeah. group, you can have a female and then if she has a calf, the calf would be with her. Um, and then the, the closest male is the escort. And then the next one, sometimes some people call them like secondary and tertiary escorts is like okay. placement. And like, we mean, I've seen some in groups of like 14, you know, there's 14 males wow. following her. So there'll be multiple animals or multiple males pursuing a female. And they're trying to get in that perfect space for when she acquiesces. To, okay, fine. We will reproduce Okay. when she's receptive to that. If you're in the closest position to her, then you're most likely to be able to reproduce with her. Okay. Um, and the closest would be the one with the most likely access. And so the ones behind that are, you know, body slamming each other and trumpeting and blowing bubbles at each other to try to like get them out of the way. And if the female just doesn't want to mate, then she's going to try to figure out how to get away, right? I mean, she's swimming away anyway, but I don't know, I mean, rocks, like, I don't know, huge boulders going around a turn, using a boat could be ways to lose some of those males just to kind of like get off, yeah. <laughs> leave me alone. So it's, you know, it's a competitive group of males trying to vie for access to the female. I did think of another thing here that I wanted to have your perspective on as well is if you were to give a piece of advice to someone who is interested in pursuing either bioacoustics or just biology in general or even music what's your biggest piece of advice i think there's a lot of if it's bioacoustics specifically there's a lot of ways into it like the generation before me it was a lot of electrical engineers that were building equipment and then suddenly the whales sounded cool so the whales became their signals you know i came in from a music slash ecology background anymore with the amount of data that needs to be processed coming in with a computer programming degree or a computer science degree and just being like i'm capable of writing all of this code to analyze the data is another way in statistics is a huge thing a statistics mm -hmm. degree or a math degree would be a way in there's definitely mathematicians just pure mathematicians that come into the field biology is not the only way biologists generally aren't fantastic at programming and calculus, you know, like <laughs> biologists choose biology for the ecology or the anatomy and physiology side. And yeah. so, you know, the expertises are different. So I think there's not one single track, do the track that like you're good at. And then that can, you can actually get into the field, you know, of bioacoustics from that angle. There's not just one path. That's a great piece of advice. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, that was all the questions that I had prepared. Thank you again so, so much for meeting with me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Uh, you're, you're welcome. Have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you. Laugh. You too. Yeah. All right. Take care.